All right, and we are pleased to be joined by the two-time Stanley Cup champion, Tampa Bay Lightning defenseman, Mikhail Sergachev. How's it going, Mikhail? Uh, I'm going all right. How are you? We're doing well. Uh, obviously, the Lightning season has been going pretty well. You guys have won three in a row. Um, just w- what are the vibes in Tampa Bay right now? Uh, you know, good vibes after, uh, after a good break uh, for Christmas. Everybody came back, uh, you know, energized and very positive. So it's it's been fun. Uh, practices, games. Uh, so we just got to keep it going. Mikhail, you've always been a guy since I've covered you that wanted more, uh, more role, more responsibility. And you certainly got that uh, this year, a big extension in the summertime. And you said back then it was a lot of trust from the coaching staff and the management and you wanted to earn it and step up. What's that transition been like for you? Um, you know, we're placing some minutes that McDonough played, uh, obviously playing some, you know, first power play time too. Just what's that adjustment been like? Did it take a little while for you to kind of find your footing there? Uh, I wouldn't say long. It would be like five, six games. Uh, didn't didn't go well for me at the beginning, but then I kind of figure out uh, how I should start the games and how I should prepare for the games. A little, a little more focus, you know, because uh, I have a lot more responsibility. And I uh, kind of figured it out a little bit there. Uh, but yeah, I mean, the transition was pretty easy. They they gave me a uh, first power play time, so it's it, it was nice to. Uh, to kind of feel that, uh, you know, trust and, uh, you know, I felt, I felt really confident at the time. You're obviously a skilled offensive guy, but you haven't just taken on more power play time. I mean, you've, you're playing more penalty kill minutes than you ever have. Um, is that something that, that you have hoped to add into your game? And, and is it something you take pride in and, and being as good on that end of the ice as you are on offense? Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I take pride in my defensive side of the game, but uh, to me, it's just more minutes. It doesn't matter where power play PK. Uh, to be honest with you, so uh, as long as I'm playing a lot of minutes, I'm I'm happy. And uh, I, I certainly, I certainly was this year. So and I'm, and I'm gonna try to keep playing those uh, heavy minutes. And you know, but uh, one thing is to play a lot of minutes. The other is to perform. So uh, I have to uh, stay a little more consistent in that and uh, not just uh, play one good period, but, you know, full 60. And uh, it takes it takes it takes time to kind of adjust to that, to uh, be consistent. But uh, I think I've been uh, I've been better. I think you were in Mexico, right, when you signed that contract. And was it true you went right to the gym after that? Or was that just kind of like you wanted to go to the gym? <laughs> good from the uh no, we kind of we kind of agreed to uh, turns and everything uh, while I was in Tampa, mm-hmm. but uh, the news uh, broke in, in in Mexico. But yeah, I kind of didn't have a lot of time to uh, just relax and chill. Took a couple of days off and just started working out. I mean, workouts are fine, you know. It's not like you you go out there and skate and you know after skates, I'm kind of hurting a little bit in the summer. But uh, workouts are fine. It's just uh, just. So my muscles and everything else don't forget how to, uh, you know, don't, don't lose the strength. So that's that's why I did it. And yeah, obviously when news broke, I felt really uh, motivated <laughs> again <laughs> right away. So I just went and uh, worked out. So when you and, and Vasilevsky and, and Kucherov go out to dinner, let's say, I think you're eight point five now. I think they're nine point five. Who buys? Who pisses? Who, 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 who does the tab? Or who does it kind of uh, go back and forth every once in a while? Uh, yeah, it goes back and forth, you know. Uh, but uh, I kind of paid for a couple of dinners, and uh, <laughs> you know, I, I'll, I'll keep paying. Obviously, uh, it's, it's good money, and uh, you know, but uh, it's just it goes around. We're all they're all generous guys, and you know, they they know how how much it takes to uh, get that kind of contract. So everybody's paying. Do you have some more taste in food? Is it easy to kind of pick a restaurant when you guys are out on the road or, or even at home? Or do you, yeah, you know? yeah, we're, we're easy. We're always going to Japanese, Asian fusion, uh, sushi style guys. So uh, sometimes we go to Italian restaurants or we try to avoid steakhouse, steakhouses. I don't know. That's not, I mean, we just, we just like uh, Japanese food. We'll get a lot of steakhouses in Tampa. So that's why uh, when we go on the road, it's, uh, it's a nice uh, Asian fusion restaurant. What city has the best ones other than Tampa? Uh, Chicago, New York, um, Toronto, Montreal. I mean, there's a lot of cities. L.A., obviously. Uh, so, yeah, those, those four. Huh? 
you were just in New York too for the holiday, right? Like, what do you what yeah. do you enjoy about that city? You're like, you do a lot of shopping, do you do a lot of just a lot of dinners. Like, what do you and your your wife do when you go to New York? So it's on our anniversary on twenty second of December. Then it's mm-hmm. uh, Christmas. Then uh, it's uh, New Year's Eve, which is the biggest uh, holiday for us in Russia. And then it's uh, her birthday on January first. So it's you know tough seven days for me for my pocket, <laughs> but. <laughs> But uh, yeah, I mean, we go to New York every year. We try to at least. Uh, we we didn't go because of COVID one year, but uh, it's our little family tradition now. And uh, we just go. We walk. I think we walk like seventy thousand uh, steps or whatever in in three days. Yeah, and uh, yeah, we just go shop, eat, you know, and enjoy the city. We rarely take like taxis there, so we always walk everywhere. And it's nice. I mean, I love big cities like Moscow and New York kind of have similar vibes. So, and Moscow is my favorite city. That's why, mm-hmm. that's why I love going to New York and eat at the really good restaurants. And we obviously have uh, two restaurants that we go go to every year, but uh, sometimes we switch out. And you know, and they have a good Russian restaurant in New York too. So it's 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 nice. And we gone to museums a couple times and. Uh, forgot we did some other activities but uh, we go to uh, central park a lot I like to walk around there and uh, yeah it's it's been great you mentioned family speaking of family you guys are uh, expecting a child right later this year congratulations yeah. um Thank i you. know you have a lot of kids in that locker room you know with all the guys on the team um yeah. you know car stamp goes on the zamboni and all like that what are you most looking forward to you know about being a dad what are you after watching all your teammates kind of go through that experience I mean, I like kids when they're like three years old and <laughs> above, <laughs> you know, when they start talking and, uh, you know, just running around and doing their kids stuff. It's, it's, it's fun. Obviously, uh, before that, it, it's a lot of work and, uh, I'm kind of, I'm looking forward to that too. It's, you know, you have to get through that to uh, get to the nice stuff <laughs> when kids <laughs> start talking. So, but, uh, I mean, there was no advices from guys. They, they just, you know, they just said it's the the most precious thing you're gonna see and feel the the, the love for the for your child. So I'm I'm really ready and uh, I can't wait to uh, to meet them. Obviously, the every year you guys seem to lose one or two important guys because of the salary cap, and you know it's not always a seamless transition to replace a guy like McDonough. I'm sure or Ruda and everything like that. What was that process like for you guys as a team this year? Do you have to kind of form a little bit of a new identity or kind of get used to like how this team is going to play versus the one that had like the Gord line in the past or you had McDonough in the past or you see you have a lot of similar core members, but it seems like you have to kind of adjust right as a group to see what works for you. Yeah, for sure. There's an adjustment period uh, and there definitely was this year. I would say mm-hmm. like 15, maybe maybe more games, but mm-hmm. uh, I kind of, I feel like we, we figured it out a little bit and uh, we kind of, you know, coaches and uh, GM, they set up the roles for everybody. And uh, I think everybody accepted them. So, uh, and it seems, seems kind of natural right now, uh, mm-hmm. you know, playing and uh, everybody feels at, th- at their spot and uh, everybody's happy with their minutes, I guess. So it's, uh, it's been, it's been okay. But yeah, obviously first 15, 20 games were kind of, you know, shaky and switching lines and all that stuff. But uh as of now, I think everybody uh, fits in. One of the things I've been most impressed about you guys is how much hockey you've played, and and you guys still look fresh. Like I, I, I covered the Golden Knights here in Vegas, and a lot of them talked about last year about how all those deep runs kind of caught up to them. You guys, uh, I can't remember the last time a team played in the f- Cup final three years in a row, and you guys still uh, look like an energized team out there. Is there something you guys are doing? <laughs> no, I know. Uh, I, I just feel like. Uh, all of our guys are very professional and uh, like this year, everybody jumped on the cold top stuff, you know, mm-hmm. everybody uh, going to cold top or sauna and taking care of their bodies more. And, uh, you know, obviously after that, the, the loss to uh, Colorado, uh, a lot of guys took time off, you know, and uh, much needed and everybody's professional. They know how to do it, how long they should take off. And uh, when they came back to camp, I felt like everybody was really energized and wanted to win again. So uh, 
I feel like it's just on the guys, you know, and uh, obviously we have an identity uh, in our organization that, uh, you know, everybody should come prepared for the season and uh, everybody wants to be successful and it just starts with our owner and down to uh, all the workers. So, and that's why it's, it's easy to do that. You just have no choice. You have to be prepared and you have to, you have to love the game and be excited. Mm-hmm. You know what it's like to be a rookie defenseman in the league. Of course, you were a lot younger than Nick Perbix is now as a rookie in the NHL. Like, do you have any favorite Nick Perbix stories off the ice or what he's like as a personality or a character? I know Coop mentioned like the sushi line. He's always in the sushi line after after games. But um, after yeah, he eats a lot. <laughs> he eats a lot. He eats a lot before games and after. And it feels like you know when he played in the juniors or college, whatever, they didn't feed him. <laughs> we're all going to laugh about that, but <laughs> yeah, he eats a lot. But no, there's not a lot of fun stories because, you know, uh, Nick is a very quiet guy, very uh, matured guy, obviously, and a uh, very smart guy. So we 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 didn't have a rookie party yet. So after a rookie party, we can talk and I'll uh, maybe I'll tell you a couple of funny ones. But uh, as of now, no, he's just he's been a steady, uh, smart, quiet kid. And, and it's, it's been good. What do you remember about your first year when your locker's next to Victor Hedman and you had Strom in there too? Like you're still a teenager, right? You're still figuring things out. Do you have any memorable moments or memorable times or advice that they gave you? Like you're just trying to survive probably in the league and and they're these guys. Uh, are you know, moments like that and years like that, uh, when it's the first year, it's kind of a blackout. When you mm-hmm. try to remember stuff, it's you just can't because you were so excited every day to come to the rink and uh uh, I don't know. There was actually a lot of stories, but I just <laughs> the the one funny one. Okay, I'll tell you. Uh, it was a rookie party, and uh, at the time of a rookie party, I think I had uh, more points than Victor Hedman, something like that, <laughs> something like that, something crazy. And uh, Steven Stamkos made me say uh, like a joke. Mm-hmm. You know, rookies have to tell a joke, mm-hmm. so he made me say, "Hey, go tell Hedy in front of everybody that you have more points than him." <laughs> so I did, and uh, Victor, I think, won a Norris Trophy that year. And yeah. <laughs> uh, since that next game, he like got two points, a game-winning goal. And, uh, I mean, he was already the best, and from that point, I think. So I kind of, so I helped him win the Norris. You know, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, I kind of remember that really clear. That uh, you know, I was embarrassed, obviously, saying mm-hmm. that, but he just took off. Where was this, the, the rookie party at? Where was the what city or Vegas? Vegas. Vegas? Okay. Mm-hmm. He's as oh, a competitive of players as I ever seen, and he gets angry like nobody's business. I think. Do you have a memory yeah. of Victor on the ice or in practice? You remember that like this guy's something different as far as like a <laughs> little bit of a temper. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's uh, he he reacts in kind of in a funny way sometimes to uh, you know guys chirping him. He misses a pass, and guys chirp him. He starts like yelling back at them and. Uh, it's kind of hilarious. Some guys use that too. Like they, they always, you know, whenever he misses the pass, cause he doesn't miss a lot of passes. And when he misses, like they just uh, give it to him and uh, they just start yelling at each other. It's, it's like, it's a normal thing. Now I kind of got used to that, but it's funny. <laughs> it gets him, gets him going in practice. And uh, I should probably use that more too. Cause guys trip me a lot. Cause I, I miss a lot of passes. <laughs> <laughs> so it's deserved then you deserve, you, you earned it. Yeah. You've mentioned a couple of quiet guys. What one of the guys I'd like to ask about is Andre Vasilevsky. We all see how brilliant he is on the ice, but he he's very quiet, especially when when talking with the media. What's he like behind the scenes with you guys? Um, and and just what's it been like watching a goalie as good as he has been these last few years do his thing back there? Yeah, it's he's obviously a, a special just athlete, and uh, in all of the ways you know you watch him prepare for games you watch him play he's always on it and uh i don't know like I, i've never seen a, a an athlete like that it's just it's it's crazy to me he's like you know obviously Connor mcdavid is doing he's doing unreal things but uh, vas he's doing those things in the net and uh he's always like i don't know i've never seen a game off from him <laughs> to be honest mm-hmm. with you yeah he can let like one goal but you know mm-hmm. just always on it but off the ice yeah, he's uh probably top three funniest guys i've ever played with he's a very uh dry sense of humor very salty 
you know, when something happens like on the ice, on the team and like nobody wants to joke about it, he's going to be the first one to joke about stuff that, uh, you know, if there isn't like an elephant in the room, and, you know, something is awkward, <laughs> he's going to make it more <laughs> awkward by saying a joke about it. So he's like, <laughs> he, uh, he's, he's hilarious. So, yeah. Is there a time yeah. you remember him making it more awkward when it was already awkward? <laughs> I, I can't really tell you. He, okay. he always makes it awkward in restaurants, and you know, it's it's just it's just the way his brain works. He wants to make an awkward situation for everybody, and he laughs at that. And I kind of I know it now, so I, I laugh at that too. But it's constant. It's just every day, like talking to uh, media, he makes it awkward. Talking to uh, you know waitresses at the restaurant, awkward or on the plane it's 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 constant and so you gotta you just gotta be prepared for that it's 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 fine or whenever like there's no you know sandwich sandwiches left on the plane and he like gives it to uh the, the guys the, the people that, that serve us or to uh whoever took it so it's it's <laughs> he makes it awkward i don't know i don't know how to explain that i think you so, explained it pretty well <laughs> yeah. okay thank you <laughs> I had to I asked people what to ask you and Warren Reichel mentioned a story uh, you drafted in, in junior and you came over to this house like did a backyard barbecue with some Swimming. of his buddies. Yeah. Do you remember that? <laughs> you, yeah. you, were, you, were swimmer, you were a swimmer growing up, right? So I don't know if you do that now or if you're in, in Florida. Uh, I, I wasn't a swimmer. Like I think the, there was a language barrier. Obviously, I didn't speak English. And uh, when I came there, we started swimming and uh, I just uh, told my friend, uh, he was Russian. He spoke English. So I told him, like, tell everybody, let's race. And I'm going to beat everybody. Because, like, I, I swam, like, when I was in probably first grade or second grade in school. So I was like, I'm going to beat everybody. And uh, obviously I did. And uh, it, it was it was kind of hilarious. So I was, it was... Have you guys seen the Neil Yakupov injury you uh, when they beat Canada? The one that uh, he couldn't speak English, and he was like, "I we beat Canada, we score more goals than Canada," <laughs> and uh, it was really long, really awkward, funny. <laughs> so I was kind of trying to speak like that. I was like, "I beat everybody, I like, swim better than everybody." So and uh, and Warren was probably a little juiced, so he <laughs> he was, was hilarious. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but it was it was really great. He took everybody to his house, and uh, he had a huge house on the water I, I don't think i've seen anything like that before like before i came to canada because uh, i think russia is a little more poor where, i mean where i'm from so mm -hmm. i didn't never seen houses like that so i just used it to my advantage i was like i'm swimming all day here so <laughs> <laughs> it, was a, it was a it was a great time yeah well, well thanks so awesome. much for doing this because unless you have another question uh jesse i uh, i'm sure you want to get out you guys you, 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 you guys have like 15 minutes like a uh, thing they told us they told you guys that you, you i only have 15 minutes for you or they asked how much they asked how much how much uh time we needed and i just i didn't know how long mm -hmm. you, you could talk so i said oh 15 minutes i didn't know how long you were available for so i was I, like I'll do I, I can talk I'm okay fine. i have no, nothing else to do to be honest with you yeah so i'd, I'd rather talk to you guys <laughs> well, I, I i think we're good but we we really appreciate the time mikhail it's been uh yeah. it's been an, it's been a fun chat i appreciate you uh letting us behind the scenes of the tampa bay lightning a little bit here yeah no problem guys no problem thanks we'll see uh see you in a couple days here uh yeah. so so thanks.